Morgan and today I wanted to talk to you about the 12 books I have DNF'd so far in 2020. Last year I only did one video talking about my DNF's, the books I didn't finish, uh, but as this year I already have 12 just for the first three months, I thought I would do this in installments. So um, I'm not going to talk about all of the 12 just because there's one that is a spoiler for another video that I have coming so I'm just going to talk about the other 11 but of these 11 I'm going to talk to you about them in the order that I TNF them so the first book I TNF this year is On Earth for Brightly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong I tried reading this as an audiobook and it was narrated by the author which was really good um, but the thing is, I didn't really want to be reading this book. I wanted to read it after so many people talked about it on booktube, bookstagram, everywhere in bookstores. This book was everywhere at the beginning of the year. And I was curious, you know, but uh, the truth is I don't actually care about this book because for one, it is written in a very poetic, poetic way and... I don't really like that usually. Uh, Ocean Fong is a poet so that's why he writes this way. I'm not saying that's bad but it's just not at all my taste. Every time people write with a lot of metaphors and just in a very peculiar way it just doesn't really go with me because I'm like if you can write something simply then you should because simple can also be beautiful and that's what I love. But also I know that a lot of people enjoy this book because of that, so I'm not judging, just not at all my thing. Plus um, the themes of this book also are not my thing at all. So in the whole book is written as a letter to his mother and he tells her about his experience uh, growing up. And at the beginning he says that um, he knows that she was really hard on him, even if sometimes she hit him and that's something that um, doesn't work with me at all <laughs> justifying um, your parents hating you I, I hate that like so so much um, it's something that I will never be okay with because I have been that person and I don't think there's any good reason for hating your kids even if a lot of parents don't agree um, so yeah, just not at all for me, this book. I should have cried, honestly. Uh, the second book is Gods Without Men by Harry Kunzru. I wanted to read this because I really liked White Tears by Harry Kunzru last year, uh, but I just, I couldn't do it because the thing is this book, um, is told in a non-linear way, so you follow a bunch of characters across different timelines just like in Cloud Atlas a little bit by David Mitchell and I adore David Mitchell he's one of my favorite authors if you didn't know um, but this didn't work at all this was just so confusing I tried listening to the audiobook as well I think and just it it wasn't okay uh, because we kept kept changing perspectives and I didn't care about a lot of them so I didn't like that and the story was just jumbled, I didn't like the characters, I didn't really like the writing, I was just, I don't know, there, there was nothing about this book that was appealing to me and as I usually do, I went on Goodreads and read some spoiler reviews of this book and all the issues that I had with it are apparently all throughout the book so there was no hope for it, so I didn't have to. The third book is The Conjuring of Lights by V.E. Schwab, the third book in the Darker Shades of Magic trilogy. I thought this book was so boring, like boring as hell. I really liked the first book in the series, the second book I didn't like as much. I love the different Londons, I love some of the characters, and I also don't like others. And just this third book was moving so slowly. I read about 100 pages and I swear almost nothing had happened. So I was like, it's not worth it. I actually have a friend that was 
body reading this with and she finished this book and she said it was just as boring as I thought it would be so she's still happy she finished it because she wanted to know the end of the trilogy and I'm probably going to ask her to spoil the end for me as I also wanted to know um, but I don't think it's worth reading a 600 page book to get this amount of information like there's almost nothing happening from what I read in spoiler reviews until the the last third so like you have to read 400 pages just to get a tiny bit of information personally I don't know if I'm going to read more of the Schwab's books I've read quite a few now and every single one I'm hoping will be better um, but then it isn't and I kind of like V Shop's writing though, but my problem is the plot. There's nothing going on, and that's fine in the re fiction because that's not about plot, but fantasy is kind of about plot, at least a little bit. And yeah, I don't know, I just I found it very boring. Uh, the next book I DNF'd is Zorba the Greek by. This author that I'm not going to try to pronounce uh, because it's Greek and I cannot do that. Um, this is a classic and I thought it would be really good but again it was a very boring book from what I read. Um, this is about a man who meets another man and goes on a boat with him to an island in Greece and there's war raging in some countries very near where they are so they talk about that and they meet this woman that is very sexy and one of them tries to get into bed with her and succeeds it's very sexist and boring as hell i i just i don't know how people can like this to be honest it's it was so bad and yeah i don't know i often think that as books are classics they're going to be good but I'm slowly starting to think that classics are just classics because they're books that are old and not because they're actually good so yeah next is Buskill by someone I don't remember uh, this was another book that I really didn't like from the beginning uh, because we follow this girl who has this weird condition that makes her not show facial emotions. Like, interesting. Fair, fair enough. Um, and so to fight that, she has uh, become really good at computers. She's become kind of a hacker. She's about 12, 13, I think, in the book. Maybe a bit more. Um, and... I don't know, it's about her, I guess. I didn't read a lot because I really hated the writing. I thought it was bad. Um, I don't know why exactly. It's Some people just don't really know how to form sentences, in my opinion, or not like I wish they did. And I was just not okay with the writing, so I stopped reading. Uh, the next book is The Other People by C.J. Tudor. I wanted to read this as a part of the Literally Dead book club by Books and Lala, uh, but I didn't like it at all from the beginning because it asked of you to suspend disbelief a bit too much, in my opinion. Um, because the story is that it's about a man whose daughter was abducted and he wants to find her, obviously. And in the beginning of the book, he's on the highway and uh, he sees, sees this other car with a daughter, well, with a girl in in it that looks a lot like his daughter but he's like my daughter is at home so I'm not going to follow that car you know and so he jumps out of the highway and goes home and she's not there and that was the first thing when I was like that is so stupid because why wouldn't you follow that car like sure you would be late and your natty would take a bit more time but like who cares you could still follow that car <laughs> that was the first thing I was like what why and then there were so many other things that was weird so we follow 
two perspectives so this man and his daughter and his daughter is with this woman and she is seeing a bunch of weird things uh, she's having visions pretty much it's kind of supernatural and also that I, I really don't like supernatural thrillers because I'm not as scared if it's supernatural as I am with realistic things so uh, there's just a bunch of things that was like what the hell and there's a lot that I also forgot but to me a lot of it didn't make sense at all and I'm I understand that thrillers don't always make sense and it's about the fun and the thrill but that's not for me and that's why I don't read many thrillers I need them to be good and to make sense and to be clever and this one didn't feel like it was uh, next is Infinite Jest by David Foster Wellis. This is a book that I've been trying to read for years and this one of this was one of the biggest books that I've ever had on my shelves and it's also a classic that people say you usually only read once when you're around 20 when you have all your life to read it because not it's not that it's the longest book page-wise, because it's about um, 1,100 1, pages, so like it's doable, but I think it's, it's written in t the tiniest font possible and you have a lot of footnotes, so it makes it really hard to read because you always have to go to the back of the book to read the footnote and the footnote is sometimes even bigger and also the paragraphs are like pages long sometimes and you also have some sentences that are pages long and he invents some words like basically David Foster Wallace tried to make with this novel one of the hardest books to read ever because he thought that reading should be hard and that it should require something out of you like a lot of things and that's exactly what he made and it's a lot also about tennis because you follow this family well many different characters actually but mostly people of this family who run this tennis academy and so you have a lot about them playing tennis and I didn't mind that because I used to play tennis when I was a kid I was really into it so hearing about it is not a problem for me I totally understand and it's kind of interesting but the thing is this book requires you to take so much time to read and I watched a video by Matthew at um, Matthew Sharapa that I will link and he was talking about this book basically the, the video was about um, how you choose your favorite book because he was saying how hard it is and it was a bit of a skit um, which I, I loved and at the be at the end of the video he was saying like what is your favorite book and one of his characters or what said it was infinite jest because people always say that when they mean it's um, they want to sound intelligent for something and so as I was reading it I was like that's true like why am I reading it is it just to have read it and to be able to say it or is it really interesting and the thing is honestly I'm not sure but I guess I didn't think in the end that it was worth the time it was taking me to read it so that's why I, I DNF'd it and uh, yeah I I have not regretted it so far. Um, it was a really hard book to read and I'm not sure it was worth it. So, The next book is a um, Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man by James Joyce, another classic. And again, I found this book to be so boring and I was really sad about that. Um, also, this was written in a very stream of consciousness way and that often works with me but not when it's too jumbled like in this one um, but besides the writing what made me the NF it is the story because it's about this kid who is in this family I tried reading it as an audiobook actually um, it was narrated by some actor I don't remember I will put his name and that's kind of why I want to read as an audiobook um, but I, I didn't like it at all yeah it's about this kid um, 
who is growing up. It's kind of a coming of age story, I guess. And uh, his family is very religious, so it's also about that. And um, him playing, playing with his friends, and there's a lot of dialogue as well. I don't know, I just, I, I didn't find any of it really interesting. It's just very boyish, I guess, which is understandable because it's about a boy, but um, I was just like, they're kind of stupid and <laughs> I don't care about reading this, you know? So, yeah. Next is a book I really, really wanted to like, but didn't, and that is The Road by Cormac McCarth uh, McCarthy. I have heard so much about this book because it is one of the books that people talk about the most as post-apocalyptic books and I love dystopian and post-apocalyptic books so I wanted to read this but the writing did not work for me at all uh, because you see every single page is written in this way with very very short sentences like you have like three words and sometimes not even a verb and that's it and that's like that through all of the book he just writes that way all the time and i cannot do it i do not like this i kept being put out out of the story and having to reread pages and still not really understanding everything because I, I hated that so much. <laughs> I want full sentences. That's that's the least you can do. I mean, I get I get that this is a complete choice, and I'm not criticizing it exactly, but I hate this so so much. And I was so disappointed because I was interested in this story, and I want to know. It's about this boy who's with his uncle apparently. I'm not sure if it's his uncle or his father. I think it's his uncle and they're in the US and something has happened. I wasn't actually sure what exactly because I said I really couldn't follow the story because of the writing. I, it's like I read something and then I forgot it immediately because of the writing. I just, it was so painful and I was sad to DNF it but I did the penultimate book I'm going to talk about is Sizzling 16 by Janet Ivanovich. This is a book I've had on my shelves for about three years and actually wanted to unhaul at some point and then didn't because I was like, I still want to try this series. It's a mystery series about this woman, um, I don't remember her name anymore, uh, but she is some kind of investigator. Um, private investigator I think and uh, she has a bunch of friends that do the investigating with her it's kind of fun but uh, it's also incredibly sexist and um, not feminist at all and just terrible and I don't know how how to explain it it's it's like it's about this woman and First, she keeps thinking about having sex with some men and then uh, she likes being dominated, but like, I'm fine with that, but um, I don't know, it's like, it's the most stupid shit I've ever re read. I mean, I didn't finish it, obviously, but um, I don't know, it was so stupid from the beginning. I was so disappointed and surprised because I felt like I hadn't heard that many terrible things about this book. I mean, I haven't heard a lot about the, um, the series, but still, I, I expected it to be better than this, and it was it was terrible. And the last book I DNF'd uh, is one that you have actually seen in another one of my videos, and it is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgerstern. I read this uh, as it was nominated for the adult fantasy category of the Booktube SFF Awards, and I really did not like this. As I said in that video, this book is about a guy who discovers this book um, called The Starless Sea and um, he reads this book and this book is actually about him. So like you wonder why is this book there? He just discovers it in uh, the library of his college and so it's about him and why is this book there? And then he meets this other guy. It's very confusing. Um, 
but besides the plot point of him fighting this book, um, the rest of the book is following different characters in this uh, weird world that is parallel to ours, I guess, um, called the Charlie's Sea, and it's very confusing because you don't really get context and then you just get a chapter about some character in this world and then you go back to this guy in college trying to figure out things. And I was just really confused and not that interested again, so yeah. But I guess that's all I have to say. I have been laughing a lot, as you have just seen. I don't regret DNFing any of these books, but I would love to know if maybe you have read these and if you enjoy them, uh, because that would be really interesting as a discussion. Uh, but yeah, that's all for me. Uh, please tell me what books you DNF this year, if any, and where you stand on DNFing, because that's always really interesting, because some people do not want to do it ever. I think it's just not worth your time and you should actually... I heard about that. You can calculate the number of books that you can read in your life and um, this would put everything in perspective because really you would not be able to read every single book that you would ever want. So you should be a bit choosy, I guess, about the books that you read. But that's just my take, really. Um, you do you, of course, but yeah, uh, that's all for me. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in another video. Goodbye. Dream I know, deep up my feelings, feelings.